Good day, race fans. Today we're going to have a practical application lesson. A lot of you don't have custom tracks like some of us do. Uh, you run plastic tracks, either Tommy, Tyco, Lifelike, um, using standard controllers uh, like the set controllers and the uh, standard wall wart. Uh, one of the things that has always been a problem as you grow in skill is the wall warts don't put out enough power. Um, most of them only rated about a half an amp and that will only run a set car under under factory conditions. If you start putting better magnets in them, uh, better tires, uh, all that uh, causes more amp draw and the cars don't run. So what we have here right now, we've got a lifelike track which probably in terms of uh, rail strength is the, uh, is the most downforce of any of the set tracks. It's actually a fair track. It snaps together well. It's well made. Um, the downside, they don't have a lot of different puzzle pieces like Tommy does to make uh, a variety of layouts, but um, it's still a pretty good base track. Um, on the tray we've got several cars here for testing. We have two lifelike T chassis cars. Uh, we have two Mega G's and two Viper cars. The lifelike cars are all stock with the exception of the rear tires. We put some super tires on them so they'll actually handle good. The Mega G's are the new Mega G plus cars. One car has better traction magnets in it. It's got the level uh, 52 Viper magnets in it. It's got O-ring fronts. It has a Viper rear axle set, but it's running the standard stock tires. That particular car I found with uh, the added downforce, the, uh, the factory tires were adequate for it. The other, the other car it's for the most part stock in terms of the, the magnets. It does have an O-ring front end set. It runs the standard factory rear end, but it does have super tires. The Viper cars um, have the body posts removed, running a standard Tommy body clip on it to approximate a Super G+. Plus. Uh, the level 4 magnets, it has a higher ohm armature in it than what uh, normally comes with the spec stock car to try to slow the cars down and approximate uh, more of a mega G in terms of the way the cars run and speed and then also the amp draw. So what we'll do is we'll start our test with a wall wart and run some cars and you can kind of get a sense of uh, how good or bad the cars run with the wall warts. All right, we're going to start off with one of the Lifelike T cars. Those were the two lifelike cars. They were a little choppy. The controller in that lane was not very good, so we're going to switch to the inside or the outside lane for the next round of tests. All right, let's run the Mega G that has stock magnets in it and super tires. All right, that's flat out with the controller pegged all the way. So that's not a lot of fun. 
and we'll try the one that has better magnets in the factory rear tire. Same situation, the car is just flat line. Uh, I had checked these cars both on uh, the Bowman track downstairs that has a, a readout on the amp draw, and both cars are drawing about an amp. So what you're seeing is that the wall wart is only putting out a half an amp, and the cars are only uh, capable of only so much speed. All right, the next cars will be the Vipers. They run good, but they're still um, flat line. The controller's held all the way open. So what you see now is you spend a lot of time and money fixing cars up and they don't run very good with set equipment. So this is what most guys find and then they start searching around for something better. Um, what I'm going to show you next is a real cheap crack or hack for a power supply um, where you don't have to spend several hundred dollars to get the voltage and the amperage that you need. Okay, what you see here is actually a universal battery charger for a laptop. Uh, this particular one is rated for 100 watts. The key that makes this unit ideal for us is that the voltage is actually adjustable. You have 12, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 22, and 24 volts. And it's a little slider switch. Um, different ones have uh, different ways of doing this. Some of them don't have as much range. This one had the most range. Some of them will actually have like a little LED readout. Um, but the key to make this thing work, these things come with adapters. So you can plug them into um, different batteries. And this, this part right here is actually what um, pulls on and off this plug. You don't want to cut this piece off of this plug because this is a shielded type of wire so you don't end up with two separate leads like you do here. Um, I also went online when I bought this and bought these pigtails that um, allow you to adapt these kinds of uh, plugs to something else like if you wanted to wire it into uh, the track or maybe it's a security camera or something like that. I cut the power lead off of a Tyco wall wart which actually does fit the lifelike as well. Um, tinned up the ends, soldered them and then put heat sink, heat shrink material on them. So I've already tested this and it does work. The thing is rated for 5 amps and that's the real key in getting any of these cars to run good. Um, before I set the test up I also tested the uh, the power pack with a full-blown Neo car and it will run a Neo car. Now the set controllers can't take that much amp draw and they'll, you'll melt them but um, this particular power supply actually produced enough amperage to push uh, the Neo cars. I wouldn't know how long that would work with the small gauge wire, but the, the point of that exercise is it does have enough power to, um, to push the, even, even the most high-end cars. Not that you're going to want to race them on this kind of a track. Alright, let's start off with one of the lifelike cars. Thank <laughs> you. 
power supply is set at 18 volts. Um, we had plenty of throttle response. Um, the nice thing about this for dads that maybe want to try to set something up for their younger sons is that you can now adjust the voltage. So we'll take that car and let's just run it all the way down to 12 and see what happens. Almost not quite enough voltage for it, so we'll give it another couple of volts. We'll run it up at 16. And we can run it off track. So let's just go all the way up to 24 and see what happens. So, it uh, gets pretty pipey and it proves that we can drive the cars off the track. Alright, if you remember with the Mega G's, they flatlined and you really couldn't drive them. So, we're going to run this at 18 volts. Still fairly flat line, but the cars are faster. But let's give it some more voltage. Let's go up to 20. All right, so at 20, we can start to drive them off the track. Now, keep in mind, these are the new Mega G's with the 15 ohm armature in them. Um, the older Mega G's that have the 6 ohm armatures will probably be a lot faster. So let's run the voltage all the way up to 24. So, we actually have an interesting car now because you can actually have to drive this thing. Vipers. Turn it back down to 18 volts. Very interesting, very interesting. Let's try the other one, hard body. Let's give it some more voltage. Let's go up to 20. So we can drive it off at 24 pretty easily. Yep, there we go. All right, race fans, so there we have it. Um, probably one of the most useful hacks that uh, we've come across in a long time so you can get the most bang out of the buck. This setup here with the power supply, if you shop around, you can probably get the whole thing done for 30 bucks. And it does the same amount of work as probably a full size tabletop unit, you know, costing around 80 to 100. Um, but just to start off and, and to grow on a budget, this this is pretty useful and as you can see we've taken a variety of cars um, 
we fixed them up and we were able to get the most enjoyment out of them. Um, probably the next thing that you would want to do is to uh, get some Parma controllers and get rid of these cheap factory set controllers because if you get a high amp draw car it'll burn the controllers out but um, on these here it didn't um, didn't seem to have any problems except for the Neo car which um, those things probably do draw about five amps so we probably pegged the capacity for everything um, we'll probably try this again with a Tyco track and see how that works but for now here you go